Hi everybody, it's Joanne here with Drew and Dina in our second series of our yoga practice. Come to stand at the top of your mat in Tadasana. Take a moment, spread your toes, allow your feet to be about hips width apart. Line the pinky toe side to the outer heel with the outer edge of the mat and give a gentle squeeze to your inner heels and let those ball mounds spread away from each other, lifting your inner arches. Find your hands in prayer pose and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Inhale to the crown of the head Exhale to the soles of the feet. Take another deep breath in here. Exhale, bow your chin down towards your fingertips. Take a moment, set an intention for your practice. Something that you might want to create this afternoon. Perhaps a positive feeling, a change in your mental thought or something different that you want to feel in your body. Inhale, arms down and around. Exhale, fold forward. Use your blocks, soften your knees as you bring your hands down towards your feet, blocks or shins. Take a moment here in forward bend, Uttanasana. You can loop your hands into the crooks of your el elbows for ragdoll or let your hands just support on your feet or your shins. Turn your head right and left. Up and down. Again, check in with your feet so that the heels are hugging in and the ball bounds are moving away from each other. Release your hands down to the floor beside your feet. Grab your blocks if you use them. Inhale, lengthen and prepare. Exhale, step your right foot back behind you. Place your back heel to the floor, turning the back toes at 45 degrees. Inhale, windmill your arms up to warrior two. Take a moment here, either straighten your front leg to adjust your hips and your feet, or if you feel like your hips are stacked over your legs, you can stay with your knee bent. Take the gaze beyond the middle finger of the front hand. And if you notice that your shoulders are holding the tension, bring your back arm a little further forward rather than directly in line with the front arm. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Steady your gaze, breathing in and breathing out. Breath into your reverse warrior. Gently drop the back hand lightly to the back thigh. Turn your front palm up. Side lean up and back, softening the top shoulder. Gaze does not have to be at the top hand, especially if the shoulder is tight. And see if you can direct your breath deep into that left side of the body. Your breath in, make your way back to warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Squeeze those inner thighs together as you ground your feet. Tip forward from that left hip as you come to triangle pose. Soften the hand down to the shin or block beside your front heel. Right arm can be up in the air. It can be on your hip for grounding. And if you have tightness in your neck, or your shoulders, don't look up to the top hand, look towards the wall ahead of you. And then where can you find your breath in your body? Is there a possibility to gather some more length on the underside of the torso? One more deep inhale. Exhale, spiral your hands to either side of the front foot. Take the ball mount of the back foot off of the floor so you're only on your heel and lower the back knee down. Fan your left toes out at 45 degrees and either take your blocks or both your hands to the inner edge of that front foot. 
Breathe out, lower your elbows, forearms down to your blocks of the floor for lizard. Palms can come together in prayer. If you have a little extra mobility and enough breath to drop your forehead to your thumbs, feel free to make contact with your third eye point. And if there's anything that doesn't feel right about where you are, make the adjustments. You can shorten your stance so your lizard doesn't have to be as wide. But you can widen that front foot a little further out and away from your midline. Take about two more full and complete breaths. Just checking in with your moment, your present moment. When you come to that next exhale, bring your hands back towards either side of the front foot as you turn your front toes forward again. Move your blocks out from underneath you to the sides of your mat. Lift your back knee up off of the floor. Release the back heel to the mat again, and this time turn all of your toes towards the right edge of the mat as you come to fan pose, prasarita. You can come up, start that way, or come down and lift yourself up. And take your time once you make sure the outer edges of the feet are parallel. Big toes are turned in and you squeeze your heels together. Breathe out, lower yourself down. Use your block underneath your hands. Or if your hands are on the mat, keep them the width of your shoulders, your fingertips pointing forward. And same thing like we did in that other forward bend. Give your head a gentle nod of a yes and a shake of a no. Check in with your legs that you can sense those inner thighs coming towards each other and rooting through the outer edges of the feet. Inhale, look up, draw the chest forward, fingertips on the floor, your blocks. Keep the length in your spine as you turn your left toes back to the front of the mat. Hands frame the front foot, breathe out, step back to downward facing dog. Stay here in your down dog. Those that want the option to move through your half vinyasa, feel free on a breath in to come to plank. Choice is yours, knees down, or regular chaturanga all the way to the floor. Knees down will bring you into a low cobra. Chaturanga will bring you into a cobra or an upward facing dog. Be mindful where your warmth in your body is. If you're ready to do something deeper, then by all means, go for it. If not, stay modified. Breathe out, lower your forehead down. Next breath in when you're ready. Come back to all fours. Sit back as you breathe out, extended cat seal. Ankles, knees, and thighs squeeze together as you drop your head and your chest down. Take a few moments to find your breath, especially around the back body here. You can see Drew has his hands around his back rib cage. Dina has her fingertips on the floor, pressing the finger pads down as she pulls them back, allowing those arms to draw back into the sockets and letting the shoulder blades stay on their, her back. Extend your arms back out and forward. Inhale, arching cat. Tuck your toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in, look up in between the hands. Breathe out, walk forward towards the front of the mat. Or hop. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, long back and prepare. Exhale, step your left foot back. Drop the back heel down, warrior two. Repeating the sequence on the other side. 
Cartwheel the arms up as you breathe in. Take a few moments, find your stance, maybe the width of your stance from right to left. Feet need to be further away from each other rather than closer. And once you find your variation of the pose, take a look and sense your breath. Reverse warrior on the breath in, gently drop the back hand to the thigh, turn the right palm up, soften the top shoulder as you stretch up and back. Inhale back through your warrior two. Inner thighs hug towards each other as that front thigh helps you to straighten the front leg. Preparing for Trikonasana, triangle pose on the other side. Reaching out, forward and down. Hand on your ankle, shin, foot, or block, or blocks. And you can see all the different variations that Dina and Drew are finding. And more importantly than anything else, is just to tap into your own body. See how you feel. And choose your modifications appropriately. You can always do more and you can always do less. Deep breath in. Exhale, release your hands to either side of the front foot. Lower the back knee softly down. You can pat up your knee with a blanket or double roll up your mat. Fan those right toes out 45 degrees. Walk your hands and or your blocks to the inner edge of the front foot. Breathe out, slowly drop yourself down into lizard pose. Back knee down is a modification. Back knee up is a choice. Deeper hip opening, deeper hamstring. Hands to prayer. Soften your head down. And make sure that wherever you are, that you're tuning into Ujjayi, victorious breaths, and that those breaths are smooth, even and symmetrical and they're not labored. Your next breath in, slowly rise up. Move your blocks out from underneath you. Turn your front toes forward. Lift your back knee up off the floor. Drop the back heel down. Finishing the sequence, turning your toes to the left side of your mat, fan, and this time stay down. Peek at your feet, edges of the feet parallel to front and back of the mat. Big toes in, squeeze the heels together. Those with hands on the floor, turn your fingertips towards the back of the mat and meet your hands towards the wall behind you, drop your head down. Make sure that those inner thighs are moving towards each other. Any type of movement, if you like the shift from side to side, side lunges, you can bend the right knee, left heel stays down, walk your hands to the right. Bend your left knee, keep your right heel down, shift from side to side. making sure that you're coordinating your movements with your breath. Make your way back to center after you've done, done both sides evenly. Turn your front toes, which are your right toes, back to the front of the mat. Step your way back to downward facing dog. And always you have options to stay in your dog, to take your half vinyasa, modified or full, or where we'll meet together is extended cat seal or child's pose. And once you come back to child's pose, let those feet flatten, sit your seat back. And if your seat doesn't reach your heels, 
use telephone books, use blocks, use shoe boxes. Make sure that you're padded underneath the knees if the knees are tender. Hope you've enjoyed this practice. Namaste.